Hi friends, this is Patty Bennett. How are you today? This is a Facebook Live video. Uh, this is a weekly crafting video that I do on Facebook on my business page every Friday. Today is the last Friday of February. This is February 26th when I am going live. So I wanted to just say welcome to everyone. This is Patty Bennett and I have these really cute boxes to show you today. Look how fun these are. They're just like such a great size. I've made five very different boxes, as you can see, and I will just tell you when these first came out in the Stampin' Up! catalog that started in January, I opened up the package and I was like, what the heck? And I tried and tried and I could not get this thing folded up. So I thought, you know, if I was having trouble with that, then I am going to guess that other people might have issues as well. So I just thought, why don't I just do a video, make some samples, show you how to put the box together, and show you how I do the decorating with the designer paper that goes around the box. So again, welcome. This is Patty Bennett. I blog at pattystamps.com every day. I have a Stampin' Up! project or reminder or tip or video for you. And I am really excited to come to you live on Fridays here on my business page. I do apologize for the delay just a little bit ago. Our internet has been in and out all morning. And once it came back on, I thought, well, let me try. And I just hope it doesn't drop. But if you see the red live button up here, then you have caught me live on Friday, February 26th, but you might be watching a replay later and that's great as well. So either way, however you have found me is perfectly fine. So let's talk about a couple of these boxes and how you put these cute boxes together and where you find the boxes. <laughs> You may not have seen them yet. They are in the uh, Stampin' Up! January to June catalog on page 11. So they're right here and they are called Love You Always Treat Boxes. So if you, I was going to write this down and I forgot. If you are trying to order these, it is number, I'm going to write it right here, 154. 285. And you can always click shop online at pattystamps.com if you want to um, find these online in my online store. Yes, thank you everybody for rejoining me. I was unable. Uh, no, Shauna, I don't think they're on back order. They're back in stock. I checked before I did this. So I'm pretty sure they're back in stock, at least in the U.S. So like I said, when I saw these boxes, I thought, oh, they're so cute. I love these. I want to make these. And it came in the package. You get two pieces. So you get this piece and you get this piece. And I thought, oh my, how do you make these? So with that in mind, I thought it would be helpful if I showed you how to put them together. So they come in a package like this. You get 10 in a package. So you get 10 of the outside wrapper and 10 of the box base. And I'll show you. It's so cute. So it's like a matchbox style. So you just push from one end, either end, so it can go out either way. And you can fill it with whatever you want. And I thought this would be really cute for a little St. Patrick's Day treat. And I used the gold gems here to make a little pot of gold. We'll go over some of those details in a minute. But I want to show you how to put this together. So the box base, this is interesting because it does not need any adhesive. It's fabulous. Like really cool that they're is no adhesive needed. The first thing that I find really helpful is to just go ahead and to fold on every one of the score lines. And it's all cut and scored for you. So the only thing you need to do is just reinforce every 
fold. And it does not hurt at all to go backwards and forwards, go both directions with all of the folds. Okay, we did those and I think this is the last one. All right, so now it's just kind of all loosened up. It's kind of like limbering up before exercising. Not that I would really know anything about that, but so I hear. <laughs> okay, so here is how I like to do it. Once we have all of the folds all limbered up, I put these four little tabs. So bring those inwards like this. Okay, and then... We are going to lift up the sides so that those four little tabs are coming to meet each other. I kind of liken it to they're, they're coming here to the table and they're going to have a little party inside the box, okay? So do you see that? So it was flat. I pushed the four little tabs inwards and then I brought these flaps up so that those four tabs were just kind of facing each other. So that's it for number one. And then you bring the two side flaps in and down and just push down on that small flap, okay? You could put adhesive on those, but you don't need to. So that's the second step. The third step is this smaller piece gets pushed down in. Now this big tab, when you push that one down in, it's going to lock it all in place. And that's it. No adhesive. It's done and it's super duper sturdy. I love how sturdy it is. So isn't that easy? It's so easy to put this together. I think it's amazing. Then the wrapper part, so so what we just made was this box, and then you have, you have this part. It comes flat, and I decorate it with a piece of designer paper, and then you can slide it on. So let's decorate this one. I'll just show you quickly. I just cut a strip of designer paper that's anywhere from like three to three and a half inches wide, it doesn't matter, you could cover the whole thing, but I like a little bit of the white to show on the edges. So we are going to do this. Isn't that cute? This is with the celebration paper, which by the way, I guess I really should be reminding you that celebration ends this Sunday, February 28th. Can you believe it? So this is on page three, it's called Paper Blooms. And it actually has been the most popular choice with my customers. I'm using this pattern right here. Any pattern would work. It's really cute. Celebration is a free gift choice with your online purchase. So this particular pack is free with a $50 order. So I just put some adhesive on that wrapper part. I guess it's called a wrap. Does that sound about right? I think so. And then I'm just sort of centering. Okay, and I'm going to lay that on. And I like to use a bone folder, just sort of give it a little extra reassurance. Flip it over, and I'm just going to coax this into place. Now you can see that we're going to have extra from that 12 inch strip. You could totally cut this off. I just find why not just leave it? It really doesn't bother anything. So I just leave it on there. And then I'm just going to fold that over and attach it. So whatever, you could cut it short. You, you could, um, you can put the extra on here. It doesn't, does not matter. It really doesn't, doesn't really even show one way or the other. Okay, so that's the wrapper part. And then I like to pop it up and press it back down the other direction and reinforce so that it creases really nicely. So that's that. 
And then you would just put it onto your box. Isn't that great? And that's what this one is. So for these cute flowers, ah, pretty perennials. This is such a fun, fun die cut set. And you can see what I did was I just picked a couple of colors that go with this um, designer paper. So I have balmy blue and I have um, seaside spray for the leaves, Rococo rose, and I have um, petal pink for the pink. And I just did a little bit of sponging, layered them, tied the petal pink ribbon around it, and then I stamped happy birthday. This is a fun set. This is from You Are Amazing. I love that. So I just stamped it onto um, a die cut from Stitched So Sweetly. And then I did the blue gems in the centers of the flowers. So super quick, super fun. I thought this was a really cute little box idea. Do you like that one? I hope you like it. Hope you like these. Oh, the... Oh, it did. That's funny. It did almost match up on the back. That's a funny. Thanks for pointing that out. So if you like these cute ideas, give me some hearts. Let me know that you like it. And if you think one of your friends might like this, feel free to share the video. So let's talk about these other boxes. So I made five total. This one features the love, love you always. Hang on, let me say it right. True Love, sorry, the True Love designer paper. So this is the black and white. And I wrapped some of the paper around the box. I used some of the pattern, this one right here, to cut out those flowers. And I just very lightly colored it with a Purple Posy Stampin' Blend, just to give a hint of color. Stamped with Highland Heather and stamped and die cut with the Forever and Always Bundle. So that is the um, the Love You Always suite on this box. And this one, this is so cute. I was trying to do something for St. Patrick's, and I was going to put a green patterned paper. And then I thought, oh, I bet this would look so cute with the um, the sparkly glimmer paper. And so I just cut off a three inch piece on the end that has the green. And I thought this was so cute. And I've layered some die cuts. I stamped, this is called, it's Oval Essential, I think. Let me look. Occasion, sorry, Oval Occasions. It's so lucky to know you. And you could do the oval punch. It's currently on back order, so I just stamped it onto a different die cut. And then this pot, so there was the oval occasions. The pot is from the Simply Succulents set. And I was playing around with different shades of black and gray and smoky slate. And I just sort of came up with a combination of all, well, all six colors, six shades, I should say. It's three colors, smoky slate, gray granite, and basic black. And then each one has a light and a dark. So it's all six of those combined. And that was my pot. I don't, I don't know. Does it look like a pot of gold? I hope so. And the cute little four-leaf clover is the heart from the dog punch punched four times and it's the green glimmer paper and then I just cut a little stem and did the gold gems so the gold gilded gems I had an extra pack of these and I thought what could I do with these and then I thought of gold coins I thought it was really such a fun idea so I just started filling up the pot with the gold coins so that's what I did the gold gilded gems so what do you think? Oh, and the green ribbon, this is actually white ribbon. Uh, oh, sorry. Here it is. So this is from, uh, I think, oh, the name is escaping me. It's a trio of ribbons. 
and it's white. And I just used my Granny Apple Green marker, Stampin' Blend marker, to make it green. Yep, so that was that. And I filled it with gold coins. These are just from the dollar store. So this makes a pretty inexpensive, cute little St. Patrick's Day goodie, don't you think? I think it does. Oh, good. I'm glad you like the gold gem idea. Thank you. I'm just going to catch up here with some of your comments. Oh, thank you. Cheryl says my pot coloring is amazing. Would you like to see? I have a tip for you on the pot. Would you like to see me color that? I'd love to share with you. And I'd be happy to do that. I learned this tip from Andrea Wolford. She's in Canada. And it's a good tip for coloring your um, a pot or anything that's sort of rounded that you want sort of light in the middle and you want it to look like it's actually round. Okay, everybody's saying yes. So let, let me go ahead um, and show you what I did. So the first thing, as you know, I always swatch my colors. If you've watched, I have a series of 13 videos for Stampin' Blends, and I always swatch them first. So here we go. Smoky, Slate, Light, and Dark. Okay, so that's that's these two. And then Gray, Granite, Light, and Dark. And then Black, Light, and Dark. And so I always like to kind of have them out and know what they look like before I start coloring. Because if you start coloring and you don't like the color, then you have a problem, right? Okay. So I start with my very lightest color, which is, to my eye, it would be the light gray granite out of these six. And I use the brush tip, and I'm just going to start by doing this. So I'm coming in toward the center, but not all the way. I'm going to leave a white area that will get filled in at the very last. That's just step number one. Now I would go to my next lightest color, which would be the light gray granite. And I'm going over it, but not all the way to the edge. So do you see, you can see both colors right there. And you have to work a little bit quickly because you want these colors to blend. If you let them dry, then they're not going to blend. So I'm sorry if I go kind of fast, but I'm I'm trying my best not to dilly-dally here. So I'm just making these little strokes. You can see that. These little strokes that are coming from the outside in. And each set of these colors is getting a little shorter, except down here at the bottom because I want it darker. And I'll catch up with comments in a minute, but I can't read those and get this done at the same time. So I will look at your comments, but just give me a minute to get this done. Now I'm going to go back to my lighter colors. So my light gray granite or my light smoky slate, either one will work. I think I'll do the granite. And now I'm going to pull this light gray granite over on top of all those layers of color. And I'm almost meeting there where I was leaving that white. Okay, so now you can see how that really blended. There's no like scrubbing. You're not trying to scrub the color on there. You're just laying down a little bit of color each time. And then for the light black, I'm just going to do just a little bit because this really can be overpowering. So a little bit of the black, the light black. I don't think I'm going to do the dark black. It's really too dark. And then let's blend that a little bit with the dark smoky slate. The only thing I'm doing is I'm really trying to stay away right at the very, very edge. You don't want this to bleed outside of the image. Although on this one, we could just cut the pot out by hand and not even leave um, a border. 
And this is light gray granite. And I'm just blending out one more time. And then I am just going to go over lightly the whole thing, really lightly, just, just so that there isn't an actual like white, I don't want a white stripe down the middle, I just want it lighter. So then as that dries and soaks in and kind of comes together, it's going to start looking like this one almost. I did add a little bit more dark color around there, but that's basically how I did this pot. Just keep adding those little strokes and leave it light in the middle and keep adding the from the dark from the outside in. So that that's basically my tip for the pot for you. Um, let me grab, hang on. This is the exact same um, technique, but this is Calypso Coral and Flirty Flamingo and Petal Pink. Same exact idea, bringing the color in from the outside edges. So I hope that helps. You can do this with any colors. I did it with blues. So I did four to six shades of blues. Um, I've done it this way. I've done it even darker where you add. Actually, I think this one has Cajun Craze in it. So I added a little darker with the Cajun Craze. So that's, it's the same um technique. It's just that you can pick whatever colors you want to pick. So I hope that helped. I'm just going to scroll back and see if there were questions on that. Oh, what paper? A Thick Whisper White and, hang on, Memento Black Ink and Thick Whisper White. All right. Um, yes, flicking of the pen is kind of the technique. And again, I learned that from Andrea Wolford in Canada, she taught that um, black with blue lid. Hmm. Sorry, not sure, Shan, what was that in? I'm just reading the questions. Let me know what that question was about. Oh, good. I'm glad that you liked that. Awesome. Yay. Okay, good. Uh, the stamp from the, the, the stamp. Oh, sorry. I can't even speak. The stamp is in the Simply Succulents set. <laughs> the pot stamp. <laughs> yeah, so I actually have a whole set of cards that I'm going to be showing you in a different video using the succulents with the pots. But I, since I used it on this, I just thought I would bring that in and show you. Uh, let's see. Which DSP for the green and blue wrap around? This one, this is the um, glimmer paper. Let me show you what, what a whole sheet looks like. I've done lots of projects with this. This is what the whole sheet looks like. And it. I just cut this section right here. Let's see, the lid on light black, oh, oh, oh. Sorry, this, yes, I see what you're talking about. This is light basic black and this is dark basic black. So yes, it does look very blue, doesn't it? This is the reason I swatch my colors. I do not depend on these lids. I always swatch my colors because look, that's these two colors right there, right? So yeah, always swatch your colors and write down the names. They're written this way because I was working on these two. Write them down because trust me, you won't remember. I don't know if you've watched my series of Stampin' Blends videos, but I keep all my swatch papers. So when I am looking to do um, another project, I just refer to these and I know that these colors are going to look good together. So yeah, okay, so there's your coloring tip. All done with that. Hope you enjoyed that. So that was this one. <laughs> that was like a long detour, wasn't it? <laughs> what is the green under the pot? So this is an oval die cut and I used my Stampin' Blend brush because I have tons. I have 
box, a whole box up here of all different die cuts. So I had them all in white and I, but I wanted green. And so I just colored it with my blending brush and my granny apple green ink pad. And then the cute little, um, four leaf clover is in this set, the, the same one as the greeting. So it's right there and very cute. So I just decorated with that. Uh, you're welcome. You're welcome. I hope that answered your question. Okay. So let's look at the last two before I let you go. So here are the last two of the treat boxes. And I wanted to show you a gift card fits absolutely perfectly. Just get a little bit of shreddy stuff from the dollar store or make your own. And you can just lay a gift card in there and look how perfect fits absolutely perfect and this is kangaroo and company i colored it with my stamp and blends and this was actually a valentine's box i gave one to my husband and to my son oh and i wanted to show you this let me get the die that is behind there oh man i should have i think it's this one yes flowering vine I want to show you that this die from the flowering vine die fits perfectly on this box. So you could just barely see it peeking out there in white. And then I covered it up with a die cut heart. But just for your reference, this fits perfectly on the box if you wanted to possibly do that as a cute design idea. Uh, die cut the heart and then just layered on my pieces. And this one, I actually made this during an online class with my downline, Jason, not to be confused with my son, Jason. They're two different people. And look at this design tip. This is a piece of cardstock glued to the top of this box wrap, and it was embossed, and it looks amazing. So you don't have to, so you don't have to emboss the entire wrap. You can see here, it's just a piece that was added. So you would just measure the top of your box just to make sure that it's the same and then emboss a piece and add it. And I thought that was fabulous. And then the gold hoops added to the front with uh, just one of the stamped flowers and a happy birthday. And just for your information, I like to get these at the dollar store because if I buy a big bag of something, you know, then I might eat them. So that's not so good. So at the dollar store bag of these little mini candy bars, there's all different flavors, all different brands, fits perfectly. That's one whole bag. So just FYI, like in case you're trying to judge or gauge uh, a budget or you're thinking about doing a whole bunch of these for possibly um, some kind of a... Um, a shower or a party or whatever, you could fill each one for a dollar and they cost under a dollar for the box. So very economical. Again, they are number 154285. You can click shop online on my blog and you can order those. And if you're looking for them in the catalog, I believe it's page 11. right there in the Love You Always suite. That's where they are. And if you joined in late, I did show how to put these together. They come flat in a package like this, and they are pretty easy to put together once you see it done. So if you missed that in the beginning, be sure to watch the replay. All of my videos are archived here on my business Facebook page under the video tab, and then I put the replays on my blog, pattystamps.com, and I also put them on my YouTube channel. So I will have these projects on my blog tomorrow. So that will be February 27th. If you are looking for more details or still photos or the supplies, check pattystamps.com on February 27th, and you will have all the info you need. So I think the internet cooperated. I think we made it through the whole thing. I was really worried when my internet kept quitting today, this morning. It was very unnerving. <laughs>
I would love to answer any questions you have. Does anybody have questions about making these treat boxes, about what we can put in them, about the designs? Let me answer your questions if you have any. And if you don't, thanks for joining me. And I hope that you will join in again, 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 <laughs> next to Friday. I try to go live every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific time. So you're welcome, everybody. I have been a demonstrator, by the way, for almost 26 years, and I would love to be your demonstrator if you don't already have one. So if you need catalogs or you would like to order supplies, I'd love to help you. If you have a demonstrator that you work with, that is great too. That is wonderful. So just let me know if you have questions or you need anything. Thank you for sharing and liking and giving me hearts. That's always so exciting to see. So you're welcome. Yes, Pam, have a great weekend. Wonderful weekend. I don't see any other questions coming through. You're welcome, Melissa. Oh, it says Melissa Sullivan is a top fan. You must comment um, often and give me lots of hearts, I guess. I don't know why else it would say that. That's awesome. Thank you for being a top fan, Melissa. <laughs> Okay, so any um, any questions about these or the techniques that we went over? I'd be happy to answer. If not, have a wonderful weekend. Oh my goodness, 6.35 in Australia. Welcome, Christine. Oh, have a sparkling weekend, Rita. Thank you, I love that. No, the boxes do not come in different sizes. So there is just the one size comes in this packaging. This is the wrap. And this is the box base. And it's just one size. Yes, see you next week, everybody. Thank you. You are welcome for the tips. I am so glad that you joined me. Thanks for um, finding me again after the internet was off. But I am so glad that we spent some time together. I will see you again next week. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.